The longer I garden, the more I feel passionate about making this place almost like a mini nature reserve. And what I want to do is encourage all our pollinators and all our insects and invertebrates here rather than the opposite. So really chemicals are banned and when we have a problem, I want to try and learn about looking to plants to help out other plants so that chemicals just become completely unnecessary. I mean, we've never used many here, but uh, that's not good enough for me. Um, and I think of the, the way we're using plants with plants in companion planting in sort of three themes, really. The first is to help protect against insect infestation, so aphids or whatever. The second is to keep fungal diseases at bay, like mildew or rust. And the third is as a feed, to give them a tonic and a sort of pep. So I'll just talk you through each of those three. So the first one that I really love, um, I'm a great, a passionate lover of Greece. I'm a Hellenophile. Um, and what I love is sitting in a Greek taverna being surrounded by these little pom-poms of basil. And that's because these are thought to be anti mozzy They are an insect repellent. And so you'll see them in every Greek taverna table in the summer. And similarly, we use the sweet Genovese basil underplanting all our tomatoes in the greenhouse. We combine it with Incarsia and biological control, but they work together to mean that we never need to resort to an insecticide. And similarly, the nasturtium family attract the cabbage wipes to lay their eggs on them rather than on the brassicas. And the calendula family attract, and all orange and yellow plants actually, attract in lacewings and ladybirds. And their larvae munch away at all the aphid family as in fact to earwigs. So don't hate your earwigs, love them. Then moving on to the ones that are good against fungal diseases. So we use chives against mildew on our courgettes and um, sweet peas. We make a chive tea, sort of rot it down and then water it on liberally. You actually need to cut chives down when they start to flower because all the intense flavor goes out of the leaf and it starts to get rust. So we call it our herb haircut. Um, and so you get this sort of double bonus. Once one, the chives grow back really quickly and you get lovely, fresh, green, tasty chives. And two, you've got a natural fungicide to use in the garden. And we underplant all our roses with salvias, these little small leaf salvias like Nachtlinde, Serapitosa, um, and uh, Royal Bumble oh, and Crystal Pink in the, in the front there. So they, both these two things, when they're warm, give off a sulfurous like aroma, which must have some kind of fungicide in it, as does sulfur, because they keep them really, really pretty healthy. And the final thing that we use plants to help plants with are feeds and we use really quite a lot of comfrey here, uh, just rotted down to make a rather stinky, revolting sort of juice, which we then feed things that like potash, like our tomatoes. It's just like your own homegrown tomorite and also our sweet peas. And then finally, the good old stingers are very rich in nitrogen. So they're really good for getting leafy growth. Combine the two and you've got leaf fruit and root. And so overall, all these things play such an active role in the garden here. And most of them look really lovely too. So it's just, you don't suffer and your garden is a healthier and more exciting and more multi-layered place that you can look at, not just for its prettiness, but also for the, all the lovely mini things that you find in it. I love that.